Today, I want to talk about a little known and rarely discussed hormone called leptin. Part of the reason leptin isn't talked about much is because it's a relatively recent discovery. Prior to 1994, scientists didn't even know it existed. Before leptin was discovered, it was thought that our fat cells were just benign storage bins for excess calories. Now what researchers have found is that your fat cells are actually functioning as an active endocrine gland. So what do I mean by that? Your fat cells are making inflammatory molecules and they're producing hormones as well. One of those hormones is called leptin. Now leptin is a built-in starvation defense mechanism. If we take a step back and we look at our ancestors, there were times of feast and famine. During those times of famine, we had to survive on our fat stores, and that's where leptin comes in. Leptin is how your fat cells communicate with your brain, and more specifically, your hypothalamus. Now this is a hardwired mechanism for your hypothalamus to interpret the current state of your fat stores. It just wants to make sure we have enough fat stores to get ourselves through the next famine. So here is my drawing of adipose tissue, and inside that adipose tissue, we have these round fat cells. Inside those cells, we're producing leptin. Now this leptin travels all the way up to the brain, and now our brain is gonna recognize that our fat stores are sufficient. Because our fat cells are sufficient, our brain is gonna keep our metabolism cranked up, and it's gonna suppress our appetite. The reason for that is that our fat cells are at the level they need to be. There's no reason to go eat everything in the house because we already have enough fat in storage. So this is what happens when leptin is working well, a healthy metabolism and low appetite. Now let's talk about the times of famine that our ancestors would experience. During this time, very little food was available, so they were primarily living off their fat stores. Now how much sense would it make if your body kept the metabolism high and your appetite low during these times of famine? It wouldn't make much sense. You would be burning through too much of your fat stores, and then whenever you ran out, you would die of starvation. So what happens is your fat cells produce very little leptin, and your brain recognizes that your fat stores are low. Because your brain isn't receiving that strong leptin signal, your thyroid triggers your metabolism to slow, and your appetite is also increased by triggering ghrelin and NPY. This increased hunger then motivates you to go out and search for food. Now you might be thinking, all right, Dr. Brown, but what if I'm overweight? I should have lots of leptin communicating with my brain. Shouldn't my metabolism be through the roof and shouldn't my appetite be suppressed? That's a great question you might actually be experiencing the opposite. You might be experiencing slow metabolism and increased appetite. This is a state called leptin resistance. It's like the brain has its phone turned off. What happens is we have all these fat cells and all this leptin, but the message isn't getting to the brain. Because the brain isn't receiving the message, the body misinterprets this as fat stores being low, so metabolism slows and appetite increases. Let me go back to the example of famine. There's an important point that I want to make there. With most weight loss programs, they restrict your calories. So you are essentially putting yourself into a voluntary famine. While that works for a short time, you'll eventually hit a plateau. Your metabolism slows and you go into a starvation mode. You might experience this as a situation where you come home from the gym and all you want to do is you want to eat everything. And you likely tell yourself, you know, use your willpower, use your willpower. The problem is willpower isn't going to do anything about the leptin situation and you will likely eventually give in to your cravings. This is also multiplied by the fact that you're exercising. So what kind of caveman would get up and go and exercise or go for a jog whenever he's starving? So that isn't likely gonna work. We need to be smarter about how we approach weight loss. So let's look back at leptin resistance and how to fix it. What are the causes? The first is creating caloric restriction or voluntary famine that we just discussed. The second is insulin resistance or blood sugar surges. This is caused by eating sugar and refined carbohydrates. Things like breads, pastas, crackers, chips. Other things we know affect blood sugar and insulin levels include eating excess polyunsaturated fats, drinking excess alcohol, and sleep deprivation. Too much stress can also lead to leptin resistance. High triglycerides will also lead to leptin resistance. This is most often caused by eating too many refined carbohydrates. Consuming excess fructose. This can be from sodas, fruit juices, and all that extra sugar added to our food. Lastly, a report by Dr. William Davis, the author of Wheat Belly, revealed research coming out that indicates that just eating wheat can actually increase your risk of leptin resistance. So we need to clean this up. 
We need to get back to eating real food. We need to eat smart, we need to exercise smart, and we need to get to bed on time. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up so we can continue reaching more people and creating a healthier community together.